today I wanted to show you something that's less of a formal tutorial and, and more of an idea, um, hopefully an inspiration, something that you can grow from, because there are a lot of functions in Photoshop that not everybody knows about. People are growing and learning with this every day, and people that have used Photoshop for years are still finding new things that they can do. Um, and I wanted to bring one of those ideas with you, uh, something that not too many people know about. Under the filter menu, the distort, those, those distortions can be animated. And they will animate, apparently, by themselves. I mean, there's a whole lot of function and calculations going on behind the scene that Photoshop will do. But you can have have a distortion self-animate. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Just have a, a plain new file and I'm gonna create a new layer here. Let's get ourselves from the, uh, just grabbing the ellipse tool, set for pixels, foreground color black, nothing spectacular here. I'm going to create a circle on the left side of the image on its new layer here. And then we're gonna turn that into a smart object because you need to have your layers converted to smart objects in order to animate them in Photoshop. So, now that we're at this point, I'm going to go to the Windows menu and the Timeline. Once you've got your Timeline open, cl click on the button, Create Video Timeline. And we're just going to move this shape from left to right. So, open that drop-down window and we're on the first frame here, click on this little symbol by transform, and it will put in a keyframe on frame one. We want it to move from left to right over the course of five seconds, so we're going to drag from this bar, this little icon up here, we're going to drag that bar all the way to five seconds, and now that we are, we need to insert a new keyframe here to show where the object is going to be moved to on the timeline. I'm going to grab the Move tool and move this circle from the left side of the screen to the right. And when you release the mouse, it automatically inserts a keyframe so that you can animate that circle from left to right. Now we're going to see with the Filter menu, go down to Distort, and we'll start with a simple one here, Wave. And let's change some of these settings here. Uh, generators 5, wavelength minimum 10 to max 120. These settings you can put any way you like here. I'm leaving them uh, as you see. Amplitude 5 to 35, scale 100% both. Sign type and repeat edge pixels. Click OK. Now that I've got my slightly waved effect here, now I'm going to have it move across the screen. I still have the simple animation of left to right. But now I've applied the wave filter to that circle, and you'll see what happens. As it moves, the wave effect is animating itself. It has done its calculations as soon as you created that smart filter. And it is keeping those calculations in mind. So as you move this new shape from left to right, it is adjusting itself in each frame to fit with the calculations that it originally had, giving it a nice fluid wave-like appearance. Now, going back to frame one, I can continue to add new distortions in this. I want to add another wave. So open that up again. I'm going to change this to triangle, leaving everything else the same. And I could do the same thing. Now it is using two waves of calculations as it moves across the screen. It takes a little bit longer to render, but uh, not too much at all. And you'll see how it sort of looks like it is growing and moving on its own. And this is without having any true animation experience. All you're doing is taking the shape and moving it from one side of the screen to the other, and then applying your distortion filters to it. And this works with many of the other distortion filters. I'm going to erase, clear out these smart filters for now. And on the filter menu, let's see, let's go back to distort. Now this will work with 
all of these distort filters, except for one. I found that I can't quite use shear as part of my animation. No matter how many times I try that, it stays static and you will not have any sort of animation. But with a little bit of tweaking, every one of these other distort filters will calculate and recalculate in every frame. So with very little animation experience, you can create for yourself um, an animated object and work that into your projects. Let's, uh, let's check out, say, ZigZag. Now, one thing you need to know, one of the limitations, when it does its calculations, it is working from the center point of your image. So I could change the amount and the ridges for my zigzag. And even the style here, we're going to go from, uh, let's stick with pond ripples for now. Once I click OK, we have it now transformed with the distort filter. Now, you may not be able to see it here, but from this point here, right in the center, this is where Photoshop has decided to make the calculations on how it's going to distort this. And no matter where this moves, it's going to keep those calculations in mind. So as it moves from left to right, you'll see that the pond ripples are originating from the center of your image. Now, if I wanted to be a little bit more fancy, I can add different types of distortion filters into this. It doesn't just have to be the same one or multiple instances of the same one. I'm going to take the zigzag and I'm going to add in the wave. Let's put that back to sign. Any settings you really need here. And let's animate that again. It's animating the wave effect along with, at the same time, the pond ripple. And you can achieve some pretty intricate and very complex and random seeming animations from just this simple, from just this simple bringing together of some ideas. So don't be afraid of checking out new functions in Photoshop. Just because you don't know what something can do doesn't mean you can't play with it because you can always start your image over. You can always press Control Z to undo things you've done. You don't have to be afraid of destroying your image. You can always go back. There are a lot of scary names in this sometimes. Some people don't want to touch certain effects because they don't know what it does. Give it a shot and you can find out some pretty interesting things like this animation effect here. Now let's go back to frame one and we're going to remove these smart filters. Now one of the other ideas, even the displacement filter can be used with this. What we're going to do first is we're going to duplicate this here because when you use a displacement filter on a layer, the, the dimensions of your image and the displacement filter have to be exact. So we're going to create a duplicate of this. Leave it at untiled one. Copy. And we need to remove this. Let's just delete, delete layer one. And now we need to add an image that we're going to use as a displacement filter. You can use anything you like. I'm going into there. I'm going to bring this over. Now this layer one, of course, we're going to desaturate this. And we're going to add a bit of a blur to it. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm only using a radius of three pixels. Now I'm going to save the image as a PSD file. Uh, displacement filters need to be PSD files in order to work here. So we're going to leave that as an untitled one. Copy, just saving that to my desktop. And now we can close that out. Now, we have layer one set up as a smart object. So we're going to add the filter, distort, displace, 
leaving everything here as is. And now we get to look for our displacement filter, which I have on my desktop. I will click Untitled One Copy and Open. Now we'll play this animation. And as it moves across the screen, it is being distorted by the displacement filter underneath. And I'm also going to add yet another distortion filter to this. We will add in, say, the, uh, let's go with Ripple. And we could change the, uh, oh, it might not show too much. It's just going to add more, just more distortion around the edges, but it won't show, won't show up too well. So I'm going to choose a different filter here. Why not? Let's go with polar coordinates. It's pretty extreme. And we're going to choose polar to rectangular. Click OK. And let's now animate this. Now you see from the very simple circular shape that I used in the beginning, just throwing in a couple of displacement filters, how you can get such a, a complex and random seeming animation effect out of this. And it is on its own layer with its transparent background. I don't need to have the white background here. I'm just using it to have it show off a little bit better. But once you have this animation done the way that you like, let's go back to frame one. I can now take this smart object with its smart filters and then turn it into a smart object again which will then encapsulate all the effects into its own layer. So now I don't have to see any of the extra bits and pieces that I put into it, but I can take this layer now and move it where I need it and uh, just place it in the scene where I want the animation to take effect. And let's do that here. I'm going to Let's see, transform this down. We'll shrink it down to about that size and move it to the center of the screen. And now when I animate, it should only animate within this small area here, which then you can use for other effects if you wanted to create like an animated um, information bar at the bottom of the screen, sometimes like you would see those during newscasts and such. But you don't have keyframes down here because it has been completely encapsulated. It is now its own animation. Let's press that check mark and I can just see no keyframes. I can just press play and play out this new animation object. And like I said, it remains in its tiny little adjusted space. Now, I'm hoping that this gives you some ideas of some things that you can work with here. Um, how something as simple as your displacement filter can offer you a whole load of new ideas to throw into your projects. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And in the next upcoming episodes, I do plan on throwing in some practical uses for this effect. So please. I uh, hope you're looking forward to seeing them because I'm looking forward to making them. And if you would like to check out some of my other videos, please click those links to the side. And if you want to subscribe, you know where that button is. Please give me a like if you like. And um, thank you very much for spending some time with me. And I look forward to seeing you next time.